Station Houston, are you ready for the event? We are ready for the event. Associated Press, Mission Control Houston, please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press. How do you hear me? Hello, Marcia, we have you loud and clear. Well, greetings uh, from the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, today is a big day, the 60th anniversary of Alan Shepard's Mercury flight, first American in space. Are you celebrating up there in any way? And can you comment on how 60 years later, space tourism finally seems to be really taking off? That's a great question, uh, Marcia. We um, usually, when we do our celebrating, it's in the evening. So today, uh, during the day, of course, we've been hard at work uh, doing various tasks around the space station. But we'll probably have a little uh, celebration at the dinner table tonight, um, which is how we how we usually do it. And um, 60 years later, you know, it's pretty amazing. I was not born, uh, of course, when that first event happened, and so it is. It's phenomenal to think that you know here we are living in space uh, for long duration, which is something you know that they could only project in the future. I think it's very very exciting that more and more people are going to have access to space in the coming years. And I think for me, it's really hard to predict what that's going to turn out to look like. But I think just the notion that there's going to be more and more people that have access is really exciting. Well, um, for either you or Shane, um, the next crew flight out of here following off the same pad that you flew from will be inspiration for. And what are your thoughts on this major transition from space exploration to high adventure, if you will? I think it's great. I think anybody, any any companies like this getting involved in space and getting more people to fly in space um, instead of just professional astronauts is a great thing. So um, I look forward to, to seeing Inspiration4 and uh, getting their feedback on what they thought it was like. And uh, hopefully it'll be more people. You know, we've always enjoyed this incredible thing called space, but we always want more people to be able to experience it as well. So I think this is a great step in the right direction. Well, Mark, um, you're going to be up there when in a Russian actress and a movie director launched this fall. What's the status of the length of your mission? Have you heard any updates on whether you'll be there for six months or a year? And if you're up there for a full year, you're going to see quite a few tourists, um, visitors, businessmen. What do you think about that? Marsha, nothing's changed since the last time we talked. I still am ready to go for whatever length of time NASA and Roscosmos decide is the right amount of time for me to be up here. I have been just delighted with how it felt to come back. I was... Uh, it's sometimes challenging being up here, but I, I, I have just been having a blast. We've been doing some great work, and the opportunities to stay up here longer, it feels to me like it's, it would be just a bonus if I got to stay up here longer it, uh, without any more final exams, no less, no more training. So it's just, it's just uh, a good deal all around. So I'm, w the six months that I'm up here officially for is fantastic, and if it ends up being longer than that, then I, I will certainly not be complaining. Uh, again, for Mark, um, with the visitors who are coming, non-professionals, do you have any concerns about that or, or just sort of an enthusiasm with the opening of the space frontier? Well, space has always been a hazardous environment. There's a lot of things that we have to be prepared for, and I'm confident that the system will make sure those people have at least the training they need to be safe in, in the worst of situations. Um, of course, they're going to be traveling with professionals who have also been trained to be able to deal with situations where they don't have as much help by other professionals, maybe. So um, I really believe that when we do it, it's going to be the right answer, and we'll be safe doing it. Well, for Shane or Megan again, um, i got to ask, how exciting was the SpaceX launch? How was the ride? And did it feel sort of strange not being in control of your spaceship? 
I tell you what, Marsha, I don't think uh, when you're first blasting off the launch pad, you don't feel like you're in control of anything, doesn't matter what the spaceship is. Um, certainly that was the case with the space shuttle. It's a tremendous amount of energy that's being released to get you off the planet, um, and, and you're rocking and rolling right from the beginning. Um, there's a lot of, you know, shaking. You're, you kind of feel a little bit like a rag doll. Um, of course, the SpaceX rocket was, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smaller rocket, and so the ride was super smooth, and uh, we just basically enjoyed the ride. There was a lot of, uh, you know, Know, laughter and enjoyment as we were going uphill and uh, you know cheering at the different phases of flight of course we're trained to monitor everything and be prepared you know in case something does go wrong but we really we really just got to enjoy it um, and it was it was an incredible ride well there was a little bit of extra drama um after you reached orbit with uh, everyone thinking there was a piece of space junk that might get too close how was that moment on board when you learned that, you know, get into the suits, put on the visors, I mean, put on the helmets, pull down the visors? I mean, was that uh, was that a little nerve-wracking? I mean, how fast did you have to move? And, and, you know, we all know the coast was clear in the end, but at the at the time you just didn't know. How, how did that go? Yeah, we uh, got a call from the SpaceX mission control team to get our suits on, so we did just that. And we knew it was going to be pretty quick. So uh, Tama and Aki really were the machine that, that uh, got us going and got Megan and I dressed. And, uh, and then they got themselves suited up as well. And uh, we were in our seats in probably 15 to 20 minutes total, uh, right when the event was called off. Well, Shane, like if, if instead of being trained astronauts on board and something like this happened and it was the inspiration for crew or just passive passengers. Um, do you worry about having non-professionals flying up uh, into space without a, a professional escort, so to speak? Um, you know, how, what do you think about that? Now, I think somebody on the crew is going to be trained as the commander, right? And that person will be responsible for things like this. And, you know, is the crew trained enough to get their suits on quickly to be able to respond to any kind of situation that comes up? That's just part of space flight. And uh, those folks will have to be trained in order to do that. So I don't think it'll be a whole lot different in this case. Um, if, you know, somebody tells you to get your suits on and you have to do it quick, then you just do it the best you can. We've trained this many times um, out in Hawthorne with the SpaceX team. So we were very familiar with it. Of course, it's a little bit different in, in microgravity, some, some ways easier, some ways harder. But uh, we got it done and we were ready to go and we were ready for that event if it did happen. Well, now that you've actually ridden a dragon, um, what advice do you have for for the crew coming up next, uh, the Inspiration4 crew? What advice would you give them? Uh, they need to obviously be studying hard and getting ready to go, and that's part of their training process right now. Um, what are they, about six or seven months out or maybe five months out? So, you know, they'll be getting into the books and then getting into the simulations where they can learn a bunch about the vehicle itself, about how it's going to operate. And then uh, once they're ready to go and feel like they're trained, they'll they'll launch. And uh, then just to, for them to enjoy the ride, it's going to be pretty spectacular. And uh, they'll only be, be up a couple days, of course, but they'll have a nice window, it sounds like, to be able to look out and enjoy our planet. Well, I know you had some celebratory dinners before Crew 1 left, and I've got to ask, have you tried the fancy French cuisine yet? And if so, how was it? We have tried the fancy French cuisine, and I have to tell you, it was pretty much everything uh, I imagined it would be. It was delicious. We got to try several different dishes that Tomas shared with us, and I think we enjoyed every one. And how was the saxophone playing in the background? How, how is that? Uh, is he is, is Tomas playing every day, practicing, or, or is he not doing too much of that? No, I think that uh, was an idea that came up that very day, and uh, he and Soichi got out their um, instruments and went into a different module to practice very quietly at the other end of the space station from where Victor was. So uh, when they came uh, down the stack towards us at dinner time, uh, playing the, the birthday song, none of us wanted to sing over top of it because it sounded so nice. So we really enjoyed it, but uh, that was the last time we've seen, uh, we've seen that since then. So uh, hopefully the next big special occasion will we'll get him to play something again. 
And, and another question for you, Megan. Um, did Bob leave any surprises for you behind in the Dragon? And was it sort of deja vu for you on launch day with the roles reversed, you going up this time and him staying behind? Um, I, I, I can tell you that Bob uh, did not leave anything in particular behind for me. Um, the spacecraft also, of course, was completely cleaned out. Uh, for a while, there was a timer left behind that they said Bob had used, but then they took it away. So I don't have any answer for that question. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, on launch day, I think it was really nice for our whole family to know what to expect. Um, but it definitely was surreal for me to be kind of on the other side and experiencing it from the, the crew members' boots, if you will. Um, it was wonderful to see them there cheering me on uh, they were super excited for me and it really just it just made my whole day so it was a it was a really great day for us station this is Houston ACR that concludes the Associated Press portion of the event please stand by for a voice check from ABC News station this is Gio Benitez with ABC News how do you hear me We have you loud and clear. So great to see you all again. And I first have to ask, I see Gwen Gwen the Penguin there just floating around. I have to, how did your kids react when they saw Gwen Gwen floating in space? Well, um, as you may have heard, uh, Gwen Gwen was chosen by the, the two youngest kids that belong to our crew, uh, Aki's son and my son, and um, they, were, they were pretty excited to get to choose a toy to go in space with us, and uh, we talked about how to name uh, the toy before we left, and the boys uh, chose a name, so I think they're excited to, to see something that they had a hand in up here in space with us. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, this is one of those extremely rare situations where you had so many NASA astronauts there on the space station at the same time, having arrived on three different spaceships. Were you comparing notes at all about your ships? Yeah, we definitely have been talking about it and what it felt like, you know, the ride uphill was incredible and how it differed from Soyuz and shuttle. And so everybody had some input on that because uh, we got all veterans up here. So it was good to just have that little bit of banter uh, in, in that conversation, but also just, you know, enjoying the, the feelings that we had and that we all shared. Mark, I know you arrived on the Soyuz, so it's a great ship, but are you out there looking out the window at the Dragon with a little bit of envy? <laughs> When I look inside, it's a beautiful spacecraft. Definitely some envy there. The windows are incredible. Um, and the views, honestly, the fact that we had Dragons docked to both the forward end of the station and the zenith side of the station allowed, us, allowed me to see views from the station I had never seen before, and I will always be grateful for that. Um, but the fact that I was able to get to the space station in only three hours, um, and these guys took much longer than that, um, I will never <laughs> envy their trip for that. <laughs> you know, you all are doing, obviously, so much important research up there on the ISS, and we've been talking a lot about the medical research, especially important right now. Can you tell us a little bit about the kind of research you're doing there? Uh, one of the research projects that uh, Mark has worked on already this week and I'll get to work on later is called Celestial Immunity, and it's a study that looks at how gravity affects our immune system and what we can learn about the immune system and immune pathways um, by taking gravity out as a variable, basically. So there are, are um, donors on Earth that gave blood cells, um, both young adult and elderly folks, so they can also look at age as a variable. And so the idea is to potentially find new treatments for emerging diseases or even potentially existing diseases. So neither one of us uh, has a biology background, so it's pretty exciting for us to get to be, you know, hands in a glove box and, and doing the, the kind of thing you see biologists doing on TV with the pipetting and, you know, moving fluids around. So we've got an expert always in our ear and kind of looking over our shoulder from a camera to help talk us through step by step. And so it's really neat for me as an engineer to, to know that I get to contribute to this kind of medical research. Fantastic. You know, we are just months away, I don't need to tell you, uh, from that first 
fully civilian launch into space with Inspiration4. Megan and Shane, we all watched you just sitting in that pilot and commander's seat. Does it concern you at all that no professional astronaut like yourself will be on Inspiration4? Well, we've been through the SpaceX training flow, and we know that those professionals are going to do a great job training this crew, and they're going to put them through a training flow that's very similar to what we did. They won't obviously need to do the portion that allows them co to come to the International Space Station, but they're going to get all of the same training as far as monitoring um, the vehicle systems and as far as becoming familiar with their their spacesuits and the emergency equipment. So, you know, I don't know the Inspiration4 crew, but I do know the SpaceX team, and I know that they're going to do a great job preparing this crew for what they're going to experience. I know a lot of people have dreamed of going into space, and so there's all this talk about space tourism. What are your thoughts on that and how this could potentially be expanded? Well, I think it's a great idea, and I'm looking forward to, obviously, Inspiration4 being the first ones to do this. And then, uh, you know, I've always tell my friends and people I'm talking to after my experiences, you know, we always want to share it with them, and this will ho hopefully open the door for many more people, um, civilians um, per se, to be able to come up and experience what we get to experience um, quite a bit. So I think it's a great idea and looking forward to what the next decade holds for space tourism. What are some of the biggest projects that you're working on right now that you believe will directly impact Americans in the coming years? So the, the name escapes me, but we've done um, research in um, systems that help us better understand um, data about diabetes. And so you know, that's a huge problem in the United States. If we can better understand the mechanisms for transfer in and out of cells and better develop sensors to be able to understand um, the situation that people are in, um, that's certainly going to have a huge impact on a, lo a lot of people in the United States. Absolutely. And listen, I cannot tell you the number of messages I get every time we cover one of your launches, which is amazing how many we've had pretty recently. How does it feel to know that every single launch is inspiring so many Americans at a time when really Americans need that inspiration? Well, I agree. It's been a particularly tough year um, for the world, really. And, um, you know, starting last year with the uh, Demo 2 launch, I think that was very inspiring for people to see a uh, return of launching people from the United States and to the International Space Station. It was very inspiring for all of us. April this year, the, the month that we all launched, was, uh, was a pretty exciting month, too, with l launches and landings. And um, it, it really, it feels really special to be a part of something that people can look to and be inspired and be uplifted. And, you know, we definitely are the lucky ones that get to be up here, but it, it takes thousands of people really to make it happen and to, to make all of this work every single day. So we feel very fortunate to be able to represent all of that uh, to our country and to the world. And it's just, we just feel really lucky to be here. Well, Mark, Megan, Shane, it is always so incredible that we're able to even do this and have this conversation between Earth and space. So thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thanks, Gio. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And thank you to all participants from the Associated Press and ABC News. Station, we're now resuming operational calm.